Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today we are discussing one of my favorite complication options, the Shigeru LeCoult Master Perpetual, part of a family that ran from 1996 to just about the tail end of 2004. This is a wonderfully wearable throwback watch in white gold with ruthenium dial that launched as part of a 2002 ruthenium dial white gold boutique exclusive collection, a short production run and a gorgeous dial with a wonderfully versatile mechanically programmed perpetual calendar module. It's an easy watch to wear and a wonderful watch to live with, especially if you have a smaller wrist like mine. You can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, the 37 millimeter case is a perfect match. It's thin too, as the timepiece is only 10.9 millimeters thick and 43.2 millimeters from lug to lug. So I can recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. The spacing between the lugs is 19 millimeters, which means you're gonna find this watch is compatible with a broad range of OEM and aftermarket options. The JLC factory strap fitted is a semi-gloss large rectangular scale alligator leather with a monotone stitch, a folded edge, calfskin on the underside, and as you can see, a full matching single fold that is pre-2006 JLC deployment clasp. This was the second generation deployment clasp from JLC. Still a single fold, but more substantial and better detailed than their first single folder. You can also see the contrast between the blasted interior and the polished components elsewhere. Nicely executed. A handsome piece with a lot more metal in it than the double fold that came after. The case is simple but strong. The mid case is sharply defined and you can see there's a very subtle transitional bevel rounded off from the hoods of the lugs to the flanks simple no guard crown profile and a conical bezel in matching white gold. Now I should mention this is gray gold not white gold meaning it's an 18 karat white gold alloy but it never needs to be rhodium plated and if you scratch it straight through there's just more white metal underneath. It's like gray gold from Rolex and Patek Philippe. It's solid straight through. The dial is a pleasure. Sunburst ruthenium, it has an explosive grain from the center, as well as silvered sub-registers for a handsome tone-on-tone -tone effect, half-frosted dauphine hands at center for high contrast, and hand-applied diamond-polished and faceted dart-style hour indices in differential size. There is a Arabic numeral 6 anchoring the dial just below a beautiful cobalt blue and gold crescent style moon face with a 122 year adjustment interval. All of the alpha style hands for the sub-registers are blued in their own right, as is the lancet style counterweighted seconds hand at center. All of the sub-registers are somewhat countersunk to add another focal plane to the dial, and the watch is loomed, so yes, there will be a loom shot. Now you can see there's a danger zone indicator just above the hands that lets you know when you should not attempt to use the quick set system to adjust the calendar. Now it is a perpetual calendar. You have the day, you have the date, you have the month, you even have the year and the decade, so a very comprehensive perpetual calendar. Note that there is a pusher adjuster on the side, so though this is the IWC mechanically programmed perpetual calendar, that is, all you do is adjust the date and everything else moves in sync, it doesn't feature the geared crown that the IWC version of this movement features. The IWC version of this module makes it relatively easy to accidentally set your watch ahead a week or more while attempting to set the time. JLC smartly separated the two functions. Now, while it does use the Kurt Klaus perpetual calendar system underneath the solid white gold hunter case back, which I'll show you right now, but underneath the solid gold case back is a JLC base caliber adjusted in six positions. This was back when JLC by default adjusted these movements in six positions, one more than a standard chronometer. Beats away at four hertz, 28,800 vibrations per hour, it features a Triovis micro adjustment mechanism for very fine regulation. The six position adjustment done in excruciatingly precise fashion due to the presence of the Triovis. It also features a unique rocker reverser system with twin jeweled wheels, and that ensures that the system winds bi-directionally. Also back then, not a 21 karat gold mass, back then it was a 22 karat gold mass from maximum moment of inertia. Circular Cote de Genève, there's a handsome, though mostly mechanically applied, rounded chamfer to the bridges. The screws are the real deal, however. Kiln fired and heat blued, not chemically dyed. The watch does feature center seconds on the dial side and thus a very precise and practical hacking or stop seconds function. It is technically known as the JLC 
889-440-2. So that's the movement you see here. A wonderful piece and robustly complex with over 300 parts. It is a wonderfully robust complication that pivots on 50 joules and regulated through JLC's internal master 1000 hours test, not of the bare movement like the COSC, but of the fully cased up watch, a test for chronometric performance in six positions, not five, a test of a fully cased watch, not a bare movement, a test of winding efficiency, a test of power reserve and water resistance, a full test of the final watch, and thus one of the most comprehensive and historically one of the most influential in-house testing regimens in the industry. A watch that puts it all together and offers exclusivity that the current generation 39mm Master Ultra Thin Perpetual cannot match. See this one and make it yours on the watch. Box. Master Ultra Thin Perpetual, surprisingly well loomed.